everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. You can see we're doing a blind tasting of Cabernet Sauvignon. We have two under 25, two under 20. I thought it'd be fun to do that. Um, I need to hear your comments. What do you think? Do you like blind tasting? Do you like interviews? What do you like? I've asked this in the past. Please make a comment. I know I have a few followers out there that uh, watch these videos. Don't be afraid to comment. Say, hey, Stan, I like the blind format. You know, people like blind because they think it takes the label out of it, which I understand. You know, I will tell you from my standpoint, seeing the, excuse me, seeing the label helps me. Because if it's an expensive wine, high pedigree wine, I tend to judge it a little more critically only because I think that we it should deliver for the price. So, I do not taste all my wines blind when I'm, I'm grading them because I've been doing this for a long time and I feel like I understand what to expect out of a wine, what I want to get out of a wine. I don't let labels influence me. In fact, it's sometimes the opposite way. The better brands tend to get a more critical eye. That being said, I do appreciate blind formats, and I think it does take a little bit of that prejudice out of the minds of some, and I hope I don't have that in me, but if I do, well, we'll find out today. Okay, let's get started. Wine number one. Let's see what we get on the nose. You know, it smells a little manufactured, like they do a lot of this wine. It's got a little bit of a plummy cherry thing going on. It seems a little bit fake to me, a little bit of tobacco coming through. When I think manufactured wine, these big companies that pump out a lot of wine, you know, they want to be consistent. They do things to wine, as uh, maybe many of you know, they deacidify, they acidify, they add tannic powders, they add different things to the wine to give it the flavor profile they're looking for. I am not opposed to that, but sometimes you can get that out of a wine. Getting a little bit like a dirty dishwater thing going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. Loads of cherries, you know, just like I stuffed a bunch of ripe, dark, and red cherries in my mouth, sands the pits. It has a delicious factor. You know, interesting, I don't get as much as that manufactured taste out of the palate as I did on the nose. It's mostly cherries, get a little bit of raspberry coming through. Very one-dimensional wine, um, a little bit of bark on the backside, a little bit of beauty bark, which I find interesting. You know, not a terrible wine. I think a lot of people will like it, depending on the price. Okay. I'm going to turn it around. Don't want you to see the grade I gave it. Not that you could, anyway. Wine number two. Rinse. And I think it's interesting. Um, and I, you know, I don't be it. This is second hand information, but you know, the wine spectator always claims to do everything blind, right? That's what they say. I met somebody who hired one of the coordinators for Wine Spectator for blind tastings. I don't know if I rinsed. Anyway. They said, yeah, they taste them all blind, but then they unveil them and score them after they taste them blind. Yeah, whatever. It just seems sometimes that the big advertisers in Wine Spectator get the best press. So wine number two. Much more interesting nose. I get tobacco. Dark currants, a little tight, dusty wood. I shouldn't say much more interesting. It is much more real, okay? 
a little bit of tobacco coming through. This is kind of challenged. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good structure on this wine. Good tannic structure. Nice integration of fruit, tannins, acid, which means they kind of all blend together. You don't get this awkwardness. A lot of currants coming through. Some cherries, tobacco for sure. This is, I think this has two or three more years before it hits its, you know, peak and really comes out to be a nice wine. I would like to try this in another three to four years easily. Long finish. A lot of tobacco on the finish. Getting a little bit of rose petal coming through. The tannins are not, you know, like heavy, but they're there. I mean, they're structured. You get a little bit of grip on the backside. Good uh, mid palette, and the finish is long. I get this almost like a, a little bit of touch of chocolate on the backside. Good wine like that wine. Love that wine. Can I wait to find out what that's about? All right. One and two under the book. Now let's go to wine number three. <laughs> wine number three. color on this one. We'll rinse, make sure we don't get influenced by the other wine. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, a little bit of baking spice. You get a little bit of cinnamon hit me right away. I just for my first shot was that, that has cinnamon on it. I'm getting some barbecue spices, kind of like, you know, when you're Barbecuing and some of that, that, you know, the juices from the spiced meat drip on the barbecue charcoal. I'm getting that. A little meat marinade, a little bit of um, dark cherries. A little bit of wood. I smell like wet wood. Tobacco for sure. Let's see what we get on the palate. I like the nose on this one, actually. Very interesting. I'm excited to see what these are about. Okay, this is the plushest of the three, meaning it fills your palate pretty good. A lot of fruit, but not, I'm not talking over the top fruit. This is good balance, just more fruit than any of the other ones. I get a little uh, currants with a just a just a touch, just a touch of like brown sugar. Like just bring a little bit of brown sugar, not much. Like one of my favorite recipes for smoked salmon is I rock salt it, you know, brine it for a little bit, then I rub, you know, dark brown sugar in it. Oh, this stuff comes out gorgeous, gorgeous. I miss it. I haven't had a boat for a while. I live in the salmon capital of Washington State. Well, maybe not the capital, but there's a lot of salmon out here. I really miss that. Haven't done that in a long time. But this reminds me of, of, of a, you know, just a well-built, good acidity, good structure, you know, solid tannins, but they're soft. Not soft. They're easy to drink. They're, you know, acceptable to the palate. They do not dominate. I'm getting a little chocolate underneath, which I really like. Now on the back side, I get a good grip, nice grip saying, hey, there's tannins. I know you don't taste it front to back, but right at the end, they go, boom, there I am. Yeah, tannins, there they are. 
Again, this wine is youthful. I think it could use a couple, three, four years, and it will develop nicely. Very good structure, very good balance. The barbecue spices come through a little bit. Just a whole skosh. This needs some spicy foods, some, some solid protein. Sorry, vegans, but this needs a steak. This needs roast. This needs something to go with it. Um, pepperoni, whatever it is. You just need to have something with this. It's solid wine. Very well made. I'm excited to find out. I thought I was excited about the last one. This one's very, very good. All right, on to the next one. Woo, almost threw my pen in the bucket. Number, wine number four. Four cup through, there we go. Village. Give some character to my uh, tablecloth. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. Stinky action, a little bit of clam shells coming through. Like it reminds me of like clams and uh, currants and cherries. Yeah, just just that kind of you know the smell, not of the clams, but the clams after the shells after you take the clam out. A little bit of tobacco. This is stinky. Like this is like seafood stinky. So funny with uh, uh, smells, they're so, um, they jolt memories and, you know, I, I, the thing with wine is if you really want to expand your horizons as far as identifying flavors, you just kind of go out and smell stuff. Remember those things. Remember what a mussel shell or a clam shell smells like after you took the clam out. If you can have that memory in your vault or go out and... You know, smell dusty rocks. Kind of think about what it smells like after a few dry days and then it rains, that dusty rock smell. Or, you know, smell that broccoli or smell that asparagus or, you know, whatever it is, you know, those smells uh, try and lock into your memory banks and they will come through in wines because that's the way, that's the way it works. That's the way we roll. A little bit of a um, petrol. I get a, bit, a little bit of undertow of minerality, a little wet stone. But I just can't get past that. Like, you know, you eat the clam, you set it aside, and then you're throwing them in the garbage, and you smell that smell after the clams have dried out a little bit. And tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. Beauty of wine, no clams on the palate, none whatsoever. A lot of cherries, a lot of currants, a little bit of white pepper. I'm liking this wine on the palate. I'm very impressed with it on the palate. A little bit of vanilla aspect, a little bit of chocolate coming through. Good solid tannins, but they're very well integrated with the fruit. In other words, they kind of flow. They're not, you know, it's very not very uh, herky jerky. This wine tastes really good. A little softer on the back end than the other wine, but still has that kind of little grip action, a little bit of like the chewing on new leather thing going on. Cherry is big time. 
cherries big time on the finish. A little bit of tobacco, sweet tannins. Definitely, hey Radar, how you doing? Radar just showed up on the scene. But the tannins are very sweet, good acidity. Um, this is actually closer to ready to drink than the other one. Might give this one or two more years. It will develop a little bit more. But this is a solid wine right now. I like it a lot. Don't like it as much as the last one, but I still like it a lot. All right. Let's light them up. This one's first place. Tied for second, actually. So I'm curious about that one. Man, I made a mess. And last place. All right. So, number one. Came in the last place with a C plus, not a bad grade, a bad average. Okay. I thought it had a little bit of a manufactured uh, nose. Uh, Copper Ridge Vineyards, Cabernet Sauvignon, California. Um, this rolls in at six dollars, and I thought a lot of people would like this uh, because it has that kind of delicious factor. Uh, kind of one-dimensional, but for six bucks, let me tell you, uh, you could this could be a crowd pleaser. So C plus is a good grade for a six dollar wine. Let's move on to the next one. This came in B. Oh, hold on. I mixed them up a little bit. Okay. Number two and number four came in at B plus. So let's see what number two is. All right. 2011 Novelty Hill Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley. This rolls in at $23. So Novelty Hill is uh, part of the Janik Novelty Hill wine lineup. Uh, Michael Janik is the winemaker. Nice, super nice guy. Super nice guy. $23 B+. All right. Number four also got a B+. This rolls in at $18. This is the 2008. Now, I don't think you can get the 8 anymore. I pulled this, I pulled this out of my cellar just to let you know. But, and I still thought it had a couple of years before it reached its peak, but I thought it was closer to its peak than the other one. This is the Fox Glove Cabernet Sauvignon Paso Robles 2008 Cabernet. And this rolls in at $18. Paso Robles is not where I look for cab, but this is a nice job. 2008, it's seven years old, um, really close to its peak. Good job, guys. $18. Let's move on to the one that came in first place, number three, with a B plus A minus. Not a bad score. All right. The two th this surprises me. I kind of had an idea what was in the package, but I, I am actually pleasantly surprised with this one. The 2013, the leader. Columbia Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, Washington State, of course, and this rolls in at $15. So this is less expensive than second and third place. 15 bucks. The liter cab. Let me give you a shot of the label. Very impressed with this wine. Liked it a lot. B plus, A minus, leaning on the A minus side. Thought it had good complexity, good balance, good structure. Thought it would age another three to four years and get better. There you go. Blind tasting. Actually, kind of surprised me a little bit. There you go. Just remember, wine is not a mystery. It is just fermented grape juice. Drink it. Enjoy it. Be willing to expand your palate horizons, you know, cap. We all like cap. Try new things. Understand what you like or dislike.
but never ever let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't like. And if you do that together, we can take the snob out of wine.